everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today. I'm really excited to be bringing you some back to school inspiration featuring clearly besotted stamps. It's hard to believe that kids are already getting ready to go back to school. Where did the summer go? Now, Clearly Besotted has some amazing and most adorable images in their stamp sets, and I'm going to be using two of their sets today. One is That's Genius, and the other one is Bookworm. The That's Genius stamp set is one of their newest sets, and I really think the animals that are in this set are super cute. There's a lot of cats and dogs each reading books, but they pair perfectly with the critters that are in the Bookworm set, which was a previously released stamp set. So I've stamped those images onto some cans of watercolor paper using clear Simon embossing ink. I'll use some black embossing powder from Brutus Monroe to add over top of these images. The reason I'm doing some heat embossing of these images is because I want to create something that's easy to watercolor and I won't have to worry about getting outside the lines and colors bleeding with each other because I've embossed those black outlines. Now the key with embossing in black embossing powder is to use a lot of anti-static powder. You probably noticed as I began this video that I had prepped the surface of my watercolor paper with a bit of anti-static powder. Just by rubbing that over the top of the surface takes down any static cling that might be on your paper and makes the embossing really clean and beautiful. So I'm watercoloring a base layer on all of my critters. I'm not going to show you too much of the base coloring because I literally was just putting down color for these critters and animals and the fun little books that are in these stamp sets. The important part of my watercoloring that I want to feature today is the details that I'm going to add to the animals. Now to start off the details, I want to show you how I colored in the glasses on each of my critters. I took some blue and yellow watercolors. I took a light wash of the blue, it's very, very faint, and that's creating a little bit of a wash over top of the glasses. Then in the other corner of the glasses, I'm going to add a wash of yellow. This may look a little bit bright and odd at first, but what is really great about watercolors is that you can scrub them. And you're basically just using a wet brush to pick up the color that's there that you don't want to be there. And it'll eventually leave just a little bit of a stain effect. So you can see now our dog and also the cat have these really light colored glasses, but you can still see through the glasses and it gives them that realistic look. One of the main things that I'm going to be using today to add details to my coloring and what I recommend you having as well is a small paintbrush. If you have a size zero, that's what I'm using today, but you can also get away with using a size two. I'm using these really fine detailed brushes to add details to my coloring. As you can see, this is very simple. I'm using just some simple lines to add those details. You can also blend out some of these lines if you don't want them to be quite as harsh. You'll see me do that here as I add in some lines to the bookcase. As I'm adding these wood texture lines, I'm also adding a little bit of additional color towards the top, and that's blending down into the lines and softening them a bit so they're not really stark. Other details that I'm adding are spots and other characteristics to my critters. I'll also add pink cheeks that helps add some little bit of life and rosiness to their faces. The dog has some spots and the cat has some stripes. Using the fine detail brushes allows you to get into those really tiny areas so much more easily. Again, I'm going to do the same thing of adding those colors to the glasses of the bookworm, and that's going to give the bookworm a little bit of life too, and also make his glasses look more realistic. The bookworm also has some stripes on his body as well. If you're uncomfortable with using a small paintbrush, I encourage you to practice with it and test out the lines on a piece of paper. By doing that, you're giving yourself the feel of how this brush works, and it'll get you more comfortable when you go ahead and add those details to your coloring later on on your project. Also, try to incorporate that scrubbing technique into your coloring too. You can see here I'm using that to create the highlight effect on my apple, and you can see it gives the apple so much more dimension and life, even though the coloring is pretty simple altogether. Once all of my coloring was done, I did cut my images out, and now I'm working on building my card base. The card base is some seed glass cardstock from Simon Says Stamp, and I've die cut our new diamond pattern background die three times from white cardstock, and I stacked all three together to create a slightly dimensional piece that's going to sit on top of that seed glass card base. On top of that card base, I'm adding my little animals with some foam tape, 
Most of the elements have a single layer of foam tape, but there are a few that have two layers. I'm not pushing these down all the way as I add these critters on here because if I don't push them down all the way, that allows me to lift them off and rearrange them if I need to adjust the placement of these critters. Along with the critters, I want to add some sentiments. I'm using our new Simon Says Stamp School Bus Messages stamp set and stamping out the greeting, have a great first day. This is a great card to give to one of your kids or grandkids to start off the school year and give them a little bit of encouragement. I'm stamping each of those sentiments onto colored cardstocks with white embossing powder, and I will cut the first day sentiment out with some scissors, but then the other sentiment I'll just cut down into a little banner. I did add a little bit of shading with a couple of Copic markers underneath of my critters, and my sentiments are popped up off of the card with foam tape. There are a few sequins from Studio Cadia added around these animals, but I also wanted to show you how I added some additional shininess to our highlight areas. I'm using a Sakura clear gel pen and this gel pen creates a really beautiful clear shine once it dries. I'm adding this to the shiny parts of the apples and also little highlights on the glasses. This makes these critters look so much more realistic and it creates a really beautiful effect on the glasses giving them that great shiny dimension. I hope that today's project has inspired you to create some cards of your own using the Bookworm stamp set and also the new That's Genius set from Chloe the Basadin. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I will be back again very soon with more inspiration for you. But until next time, here are two more videos on screen that you might like. And thanks again for tuning in today. I hope you have a great rest of the week and I will see you again soon. Bye!